how to do the dynamics of the group enable or not the kind of learning that we want to do with each other. Mm-hmm. So part of the discipline is who needs to be there. For instance, if you have some psychotherapists who are having a discussion, should they maybe involve a client from time to time? Would that be a good thing? You see what I mean? So mm-hmm. you have to ask the question of like, who is the community around the domain yep. that would maximize the learning? Some yep. therapists would say, yeah, if you don't have a client there, Whatever you say is just too abstract, right? Uh-huh. Somebody could say, no, 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 no. If, if a client is there, there's too much we can't say. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, right. uh, how afraid I am in front of the client or something. I can't. See what I mean? So you have to, there is a discipline there of understanding that the, con- the social constitution of a group has a lot of influence on the learning that is possible in that context. Yeah. So this, this is one of the, the big issues in any kind of... Um, I think in therapists, and why aren't there aren't more communities of practice? Because this is a huge issue about getting right. together with a group. It doesn't take a lot of disruption, a lot of uh, frustration to get people feeling, ah, I have better things to do with my time, or this isn't. I'm, I'm. Uh, there's all that work of a community forming and having the patience, and even having the know-how to make a community coalesce, however small that happens to be. But really coalesce around learning, you see what I mean? So that leads to this notion of practice. You need to develop enough trust among the the members that they are really able to talk about the challenges of practice. Yes. Not just about how it should be, but how it is. 